This message is produced by TruthFromGod.com, which is one of hundreds of messages that can be read, heard, and watched at TruthFromGod.com. Leaving Earth Now, this presupposes that there is another inhabitable place to go, and that one is able to get there. Who has the answers? Is it science or religion? NASA has claimed to have gone to the moon and to be sending rovers to other places. Science believes it can develop a technology capable of leaving Earth and going anywhere desired. White Western civilization has always had the can-do attitude toward its environment. These people have moved mountains, making travel easier. They have diverted rivers, changing arid land into fertile food-producing farms. They have drilled wells where no water existed before. They have constructed dams, built solar collectors, erected windmills and split atoms in order to produce power which drives an array of devices making life easier. They have invented turbines and engines which are capable of delivering tens of thousands of horsepower. They've created lights turning night into day. They have brought forth high-speed vehicles that can travel on land, in the sea, through the air, and into space. They have dug many miles into the earth to extract the minerals necessary to build, develop, and create the world in which we now live. Looking back on the changes in the last century causes men to believe that science will develop still greater technologies and that all things are possible. This is a belief which fosters all kinds of speculations. A belief system is not science, but is a cancer spawned within it. This deadly growth goes by the name of science, but it is nothing but theoretical science, which only lives in the netherworld of faith, not in the real world of fact. It cannot be proved which violates the very first law of true science. Because belief and faith are necessary key elements of this pseudoscience, it's no different than any other religion with its tenets of faith, the credo, and this new theoretical science religion is built upon nothing but speculation and supposition espoused by its high priest gurus wearing the false facade of scientist. Case in point, the populace is now being fed constant diet about extraterrestrials, aliens, ancient astronauts, flying saucers, visitations, close encounters, superior technologies, and more of all beings which inhabit other worlds. No matter how many shows and documentary-styled programs are produced by Hollywood, narrated in the media, there is not one fact upon which any of this is based. It's another religion in its purest form of blind belief and acceptance of fiction as fact. Being the new kid on the block with all the media cock hype, it has gained acceptance, but has not replaced the widespread dominance of Christianity. Over one-third of the world's population is Christian, 
There are over 30,000 such denominations in just the United States. Christianity has its doxology about leaving our earth and when this occurs. Theirs has nothing to do with man's technology, but is based upon people dying. This statement may sound strange, since Christianism's enunciations are never simply stated, for in doing so would show the ridiculousness of their rhetoric. According to it, no person exists until some man's sperm fertilizes some woman's egg. When that fetus is born, then it becomes eternal. Where it spends eternity is totally dependent upon what it believes and does, and it is at death that it goes to either heaven or hell. So death is the necessary vehicle for this journey leaving earth. Theoretical science and Christianity only exist in the realm of blind belief, totally void, provable fact. Christianism even claims its beliefs are based upon the Bible. But nothing could be further from the truth. Nowhere in the scriptures does it say that by being born as the result of some sex act makes any individual eternal. How simple is it to disprove that Christian chicanery? Take an English dictionary and look up the word eternal. It means without beginning or ending. If anyone has a beginning, then by definition, they are not eternal. The church cocks had better pick a different English word to express their non-biblical theological concoction. Just ask any of these soothsayers if a person's eternity begins at birth. Then does everyone have different amounts of eternity? You had better back up for their pettifogging may turn violent. And who would dare ask, does George Washington have more eternity than I do? The logic of their doctrine is self-evident and certainly not biblical. No matter what name is used, anything based upon unproven theory or its more august-sounding brother theology, which requires acceptance, belief, or faith, is a man-made religion. It is not the intent of this message to disprove all the lies and deceptions perpetuated upon white western man by the charlatans that continually hold the Bible up to ridicule and scorn in order to advance their shams, but to address the fact that there are those who do come into earth as well as leave it, and this is no singular event. The truth of the matter is contained in the source of all truth, the Bible. This may come as a shocker, but nothing in true science has ever disproved or contradicted any statement contained in the ancient text of the Bible, through science has disproved the fallacious fabrications taught by Christianism, which claims its dogma is biblical. Again, nothing could be further from the truth. Contrary to all Christendom, no one is going to heaven forever when they die for what would be the point of a resurrection. Jesus did not go there when he died, but was resurrected again after three days and nights in a tomb, 
walked around on earth instead of flying off to heaven forever. He was seen by many, even 500 at one time after rising again, 1 Corinthians 15, 5 through 6. Not only does Christianism falsely teach that there was only one Son of God, ignoring the statement of Luke 3.38, but also that there is only one heaven, which is clearly false according to the very first book of the Bible, Genesis 2.1. Nothing that Christianity proclaims is true according to the scriptures. The daily prayer that was given in Matthew 6, 9 through 13 says, Thy kingdom come in earth. Will this daily request which Jesus said to make unto God be ignored or come to pass? The answer is given in Revelation 11:15. The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. According to Revelation 20, 4 through 6, there are many that will reign with Christ. The kingdom of Yahweh is coming to earth and it will be ruled and reigned over by Christ and many with him who are not in heaven forever but rule in earth. It is also important to learn and use the biblical name for God, Yahweh, Jesus, Yahweh Shua, and God's children, Elohim. These names have been carefully hidden, and if you do not know them, then go to the message, Three Holy Names. The Bible also says that Jesus, Yahweshua, has brethren, Elohim, and that he is not his own father, Yahweh. This is covered in detail in the messages Higher Than Jesus and Biblical Ancient Aliens. Jesus said that nobody goes up to heaven that did not come down from it and whose original dwelling was not in it. Coming down and going up is not a one-time singular event. For Elijah came back in John the Baptist, stated by Jesus, Yahweh Shua, for the scriptural verification of these statements, go to the message is, Elijah was John, and ascending, descending. It is Elohim that are eternal, who have no beginning or ending, who come into earth, and leave it many times in their growing up into the adult sons of Yahweh. They are being made perfect like their big brother Yahweh Shua, and this is why they come into and go out of earth, which is covered in the message, made perfect, sojourning in earth nothing more than a day at school and when the lessons of the day are completed the Elohim go to the third heaven for a little rest and reflection and then return for another day's sojourn in the schoolhouse of earth this is all according to the scriptures even though Christianity attempts to hide these biblical principles but Yahweh reveals them to his children Elohim as and when he chooses. Today may be your time, and if so, then praise your father Yahweh. You're not insignificant, but are more precious to your father 
than all the creation. You Elohim are the offspring of Yahweh and are eternal. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Luke 12, 32. It will be in earth, and it is your destiny to reign and rule it. Yahweh foreknew and predestinated you to such a sensational, spectacular splendor. Truth is stranger than fiction. And if this is vibrating within you, then give all praise, honor, and glory unto your Father Yahweh and unto your big brother Yahweh Shua, who is the captain of your victory. Yahweh is in control of all things. Everything is happening in absolute accordance with and in complete conformity to his sovereign will. And this is just the beginning of the story. This message is produced by TruthFromGod.com, which is one of hundreds of messages that can be read, heard, and watched at TruthFromGod.com.